Before you begin drawing, edit your photo to where it's black and white. Find the saturation icon in whatever editing program you're using and lower it to where you've gotten rid of all of the colors. Next, I want you to find the contrast option and I want you to play around with the contrast. Don't make it too dark or too light to where you're losing the details. So I've just lowered mine a little bit. If you have a shadow icon, see if you can mess around with that. I'm noticing that I just like it the way it is, so I'm not going to change it for there. The highlights, I am going to increase my lighter values to where my three um, landscape will look three, more three-dimensional, as well as increasing the brilliance to make it a little bit brighter. The exposure, I'm gonna keep the same because I like the way it looks. So just make sure that whatever you choose to edit your photo, that you're not losing the details, but you're increasing the range of values that you're seeing. By increasing your range of values and having a full range of values from your lightest lights to your darkest darks will help make your landscape look more three-dimensional. And once you've turned your photo into black and white and changed around the contrast, highlights, and shadows, we can begin drawing out our landscape. Okay, so in your colored folder, you are going to see three sheets of paper that are really thick and are all the same size. This is your final project paper that you're gonna be drawing on. So grab one, and then I'm going to demonstrate how we're gonna be drawing our border on this paper so it matches our landscape photo. On your iPad, I want you to pull up the photo for your landscape, and we're gonna be measuring how big your photo is. I want this to be the same size as I'm gonna draw it on here. So I, it's hard, you know, you can't really control how big you view this on the photo app. So I'm going to send this over to um, a pages document. So I'm gonna open up a new pages document. You guys can use Notability. I just use pages all the time for creating documents for you guys. So um, I'm just gonna use that, but feel free with it, to use whatever you want. I'm going to add in a photo. So I will click the new photo that I've just made. And then I'm going to enlarge this to where it's not no smaller than a five by seven. So I'm gonna make this, you'll see in the corner right here, it's changing the size. I'm gonna switch this down to where I, it's about five inches. And then take your ruler that is in your portfolio and that's seven inches by oh a little bit under five so that means that I need to just increase it a little bit I want to keep going to where this is five inches so maybe it'll just look differently on on the screen versus the ruler so it's five inches that way and then seven and a half inches wide I'm going to be drawing a five by seven and a half inch rectangle on here so where it matches the image I just measured on my iPad. I want it to be floating um, parallel with the sides of my paper. To make sure it's going to be floating, I'm going to measure an inch and a half up about three times just so I know that this bottom line that I'm creating is parallel with the bottom of the paper. So notice I'm gonna put my ruler on those three marks I just made. I'm gonna have my rectangle start about an inch in towards the page. So I'll mark an inch in. Now I had measured my photograph to be seven and a half inches wide on my iPad. So I'm going to draw over seven and a half inches. I measured an inch over here. So I'm gonna keep that the same by drawing one inch three times on the left side. So this side is going to be parallel with this side of the paper. I'm gonna just turn it a little bit. I measured that my landscape is five inches tall, so I'm going to draw a five inch line this way. Now just to save some time, I'll just mark five inches a few times from the bottom of my horizontal line here to make sure that this top line will be parallel with the bottom. I'll line my ruler up on those three marks. And then once again, I'm going to measure over seven and a half inches. 
and then I'll connect the two ends of my line over here. So now I have a rectangle that's seven and a half inches long, five inches in height. It matches the same size that I measured on my iPad. Now your picture might be different. It might be six by nine inches or I don't know, um, seven and a half by 10 inches. Just make sure that you're not drawing any smaller than a five by seven inch frame. Before you begin drawing, I would um, recommend taking a screenshot of your work and then drawing from your screenshot because, um, you know, sometimes in a document we can accidentally change the size and it's just going to be better if we're working with, um, you know, a, a size that's not going to change on us. When you begin drawing, I want you to begin drawing with your 4H pencil and make sure it's nice and sharpened. You're going to have to generally place in the outline, the contour of your objects. Today and tomorrow, you should not be shading this at all. So first, I'm noticing here, the side of these mountains. It's a little bit above halfway, like actually this hill seems to be directly right in the middle of the composition and that's just about a half an inch up from there. So I'm gonna find half halfway. And then now that I have this halfway point, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start sighting the angles of my objects. Now when I'm sighting, my arm is straight. I'm not bending my elbow. I'm also standing when I'm drawing so I have more control. So notice how I'm placing the pencil on the angle of this um, hillside right here. Keeping my arm in straight and my hand in the same position, I'm noticing that this angle is coming down here. So I'm gonna draw that angled line in. I always double check after I draw and I'm going to capture every little angle change that I'm seeing. Notice I'm not drawing like this like curvy edge in here, like the ripply edge of the, the tree line. I'm simplifying it to a straight line. You want to draw with a 4-H pencil as you're marking this in because if you, um, would happen to make any mistakes, a 4-H pencil doesn't really stain the paper like a 2B or 4B pencil would. The next line I'm gonna draw in is gonna be the back edge of this lake. Before I draw it, I need to analyze the distance between the top of this line and that line. It looks um, a little bit more than half an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch, if not an inch, and you could always use your ruler to um, you know, actually measure that because this is gonna be the same size. It's actually five eighths of an inch. So I can just easily, you know, map that out, make sure it's in the exact spot and then sight that angle. It actually curves up a little bit. So I'm glad I, I noticed that because that will help make my lake look nice and round, but it does flatten out right around here. Oop, I'm moving my pencil too much. Make sure when you're sighting that you're keeping the arms straight. And we're, I'm just drawing some smooth lines in here. I'm not doing anything too detailed yet. And the reason why you want to draw from general to specific is, you know, if you would, if I would go in here and spend all of my time putting in the specific tree line around here, and then I probably would spend, I don't know, like say I spend 30 minutes just doing that. If I finished the drawing and I noticed, oh my gosh, those trees are too small or they're too big, then I just wasted that 30 minutes. So first we just wanna make sure that we're mapping in the proper placement of everything. If you have a printer at home and you want to print out your photo and draw a grid over top of it, um, if that would be easier for you, know that you are more than able in, um, to do that. I'm, I'm going to accept that but I'm showing you this style of drawing in case you do not have a printer. And this is the way that you're going to draw then. So notice I, I, mean, I'm, I am using my ruler to help me mark, mark where things should go in here to keep things a little bit more accurate because it's hard definitely to draw things in when they're, they look like they're just floating in space. So even like this point in here, this is about an inch and a, um, what is that? an inch and three sixteenths. So I can go to an inch and three sixteenths and mark that in. Notice I'm drawing it too low 
it comes over about two and seven eighths. And actually, look at that. I, I drew it right on the right point. I, I was drawing it too far over when I was mapping it out. So that's why measuring is really good too, using your ruler to, to mark things and you can get the proper placement. I love it when things line up so perfectly like that. It makes me feel so awesome. <laughs> so if you have things like that happen in your work, um, celebrate it. Make yourself feel good about yourself. And when things don't go well in your work, because trust me, they won't go well at certain points in time, um, you know, don't don't beat yourself up. Now, one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to cite where this ends by measuring where that one ends. So notice I'm gonna place my pencil on the edges of both the sides of the lake. I'll move my pencil over, and that's telling me that this should end about here. And that helps me figure out where I should be drawing my next sighting lines. And where they should be curving across the entire composition. Now, once again, everything's looking a little blocky and that's okay because this is supposed to be from general to specific. You know, as I'm drawing this hill in right here, I'm gonna cite it to the top of this mountain over there to make sure I'm getting it in the right spot. Because the worst thing would be if like I'm drawing it too high up or too low and thankfully it's right it's right in a good spot here. I'll draw that line of how it comes in this way. Should converge with this lower line that I've added in. You know and notice I'm not drawing in any of the details quite yet of this stuff. Um, you know, like this line that comes down, I'm noticing that if I would extend it up, it would be hitting about maybe an eighth of an inch in to this mountain. Just wanna double check and make sure that that angle's correct. It looks a little too, too steep. That looks a little bit better. So I'm gonna measure that hill change and then place it in where if I drew my line up, it would match where it would match on that mountain. Then I'll modify that hill all the way down. Sometimes I'll use my nails to kind of map the angle of certain lines that I'm seeing. Here where I have a, a harsh um, value change, you can draw that, that shift in there. So whenever you get to shading, you kind of know like, oh, okay, this is where that should go. I'm gonna do the same thing with a part of this mountain where it's like kind of flowing over this hill. Notice with every line I draw, I'm always citing the angles of those objects. To ensure that everything's accurate. To make sure that this is gonna be in the proper spot, I can cite from here to the tip of that mountain with my arms straight. And I'm beautiful, that's in the right spot. I'll cite the angle of the top of this mountain to roughly put it in. Notice there's lots of dips in this line, but I'm drawing the edge of that mountain as a straight line first, just to make sure it's in the proper um, spot. Then I'll go back in and modify it. Here, once again, I can measure on my paper like how far up this mountain comes up. So that comes up about um, let's see, three and a quarter. So I'll go to my paper and measure up three um, inches and a quarter from the bottom. And that's telling me that this hillside should start right on that point. And I can start mapping it in that way. When I get to my tree line here, this is, can be where it's a little bit trickier. So if I would show you guys, um, let's see if I can get this drawn here. Oh, no, let me go to my pages document actually. I'll change the color so we can see it. Let's do this like burgundy color. I'm just going to be drawing in the top points of these trees. So see how I'm simplifying the tree line here to where it's just a basic line. I'm not worried about the tops of the trees. Now, I, I will definitely want to 
draw in the basic line of where the trunks end as well. But even here with like these three little trees that I'm seeing here, I'm just going to be drawing the basic shape of them. Even with this tree, when I get to this one, I'm just drawing the outline of it. I'm not gonna draw anything else. Um, well, actually I am gonna draw something else because I can see these branches. I am gonna draw these branches in very lightly. So that is what um, this next part of the drawing should look like. It's something that's once again, very simplified. So I'll go back to my photo just so I don't move anything around and I will begin drawing that line in. Whenever you have an object floating in the middle of a composition, always cite that object to other things in the composition so you know where it sits. So first I'm noticing, okay, where does the bottom of that trunk relate to the lake? I'm citing the angle of it and then also citing the angles of the tree. I'm not drawing in the detail, just the basic edge of the tree as a straight now, line. Now one thing that I'm gonna do is I need to measure the proportion of this tree to something else in my drawing to make sure I'm drawing this the proper height. So one, I can take my pencil and I know that these hills are fairly accurate on this side. So about right under this mountain right here, this height of um, this aspect of that is the same height as this tree. So if I go to my drawing and I go right underneath where that mountain is, I measure that point. That is how tall my tree should be. And I'm noticing it's a little too tall. So I'm going to shorten it and make it a little bit smaller. I'll double check my drawing. And once again, now my measurements are more accurate. Because I have this tree perfected, I can use that tree to cite the other trees in of where the starting points might go, as well as the bottom part of these tree trunks. I could even measure the distance between the tree trunks to see you know, how far away from one another they should be. That one should be starting here. Once again, I'm not shading, I'm just roughing in the shape. I'll cite the angle of where the two trees um, end in relation to one another modify my marks, and then add that third and final tree in here. The last thing that I need to draw in is going to be this tree in the foreground, as well as the clouds in the sky. For the tree in the foreground, um, you know, I can measure over from this side of my picture, that's two inches and a quarter. So there's two inches and a quarter. I could do it um, that way. You could also measure from other points in the drawing. So I can measure from like the edge of this point to the bottom of that tree. And you'll notice that they're gonna line up in the same position. So I know that that um, spot is good. When you draw your tree, especially if you're gonna start drawing in those branches, um, you want you want to draw them lightly, but just know that you know trees and their branches um, are not perfectly straight lines. They're very organic, and these bigger branches that come out are going to be getting thinner near the ends. Branches are always um, you know wanting to reach towards the sky. What you don't want to do, and this is a common error I see in a lot of students' work, is they'll tend to draw trees to where they look too. Um, abstract or they'll you know have everything just be too rigid and not organic enough we're like you know if we really want to draw a tree that look realistic we'll use our line weight to make the branches look way more realistic by pressing hard near the base and thinner as we draw out you can see how this tree that I'm developing on the right here looks way more realistic than the two that we're seeing on the left. Now I'm not shading this right now. I'm just placing in, you know, where things should go. And then I'll, I'll develop into this value later on. And then lastly, I can start seeing my leaves on this tree because it's the closest thing to me, but I don't want to draw it in the detail. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give a rough outline of where that foliage ends.
and I can, you know, measure the proportions. So the widest point of this is about right here. And I can see how many wide points create the height. And there is um, two widths in the height, or one and a half widths in the height, excuse me. So when I measure that, the widest point of this does meet inside here, one and then a half. So I know that the foliage is in proportion. The last thing that I need to do is kind of just very lightly map in my clouds. Now the great thing about clouds is that they're constantly moving. So if your clouds um, and the placement of the clouds look a little bit different than the sky, um, you know, we don't need to spend a thousand years perfecting it. Just get the general placement in because a lot of these lines that you're putting in, you're going to be shading over, so you might even lose them. But it's just good to have some in there to help you out um, for whenever we shade the sky in two days. So even these whippy, wispy clouds, I'm just generally marking it in. And like I said, these, it's not fully, you know, uh, you don't have to stress yourself out about getting these like completely accurate, just as best as you can. Here's a final product of what I want your landscape drawing to look like with this initial drawing. It should just be basic lines, not a lot of detail drawn in. Things should be in proportion and um, all placed in the proper spot. And please don't start shading. Just keep this initial drawing simple contour lines.